our vision for this facility, which will include a new check-in lobby, seamless connection to the adjacent concourses, as well as additional opportunities to showcase the artwork of the legacy of Harvey Milk. We know that airports are economic engines for the regions they serve, powering jobs, income, and revenue. The completion of this facility means SFO can continue to drive employment and business activity at the airport and throughout the Bay Area. I hope travelers from around the world are inspired by the story of Harvey Milk as they enjoy and experience this terminal that bears his name. We look forward to welcoming you all back in 2024 to see the completion of this project. And again, my sincere thanks to Speaker Pelosi, Congresswoman Speer, and Congresswoman Eshoo for their incredible leadership and support of SFO and for the passage of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. But before I turn it over to Speaker Pelosi, I'd just like to say how grateful we are to Congresswoman Speer for her commitment to and support of the airport for so many years of service. Thank you, Congresswoman, for your incredible support, and you will be sorely missed. And now it's my great pleasure to welcome the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, who we look forward to with working for many years to come. Thank you very much, Ivar, for your leadership at this great, great airport of which we are very, very proud, but for whom we have great prospects, as, as demonstrated in the infrastructure legislation. I said to Ivar, uh, now and before, uh, being the head of an airport is like being the mayor of a city, the engineer uh, of a, a very complicated project. Uh, uh, just, it, it has so many complications, so many opportunities. Thank you for your leadership and bringing so many of them to the fore, Ivor, for your leadership as well. It makes us a gateway to a very first-class city, which is San Francisco. Now, Jackie Spear, Congresswoman Spear, Congresswoman Eshoo, and I all knew Harvey Milk. We all knew Harvey Milk. I knew him quite well in San Francisco. He would be so overwhelmed by the, the honor that this is to have this airport, not only this terminal, not only named for him, but expanded in his name and with the beautiful art that will be there. Uh, some of us were together in San Diego and saw the ship named for Harvey Milk. So this is in keeping with, imagine a military ship named for Harvey Milk, but he was in the Navy and we had the, na the naming here. So again, for all of the groundbreaking work that he did, all the pioneer spirit uh, that he brought to the government and politics, all of the, shall we say, sense of humor, would you say, yeah. that he <laughs> brought to all of this and all the sacrifice that he made, it is personally as well as officially uh, touching and moving and an honor to be here as we talk about the expansion of the Harvey Milk Terminal. I'm honored to be here with Jackie Spear and join Ivan. Uh, well, uh, she has a long time in Congress yet, so we'll continue to honor her, praise her, and benefit. Uh, even when she leaves Congress, her legacy will be a benefit uh, to our, our community. And to be here with Congresswoman Eshoo, member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, had so much to do with the legislation uh, that we had passed recently, and I'll go into in a moment. And to be here with the building trades, Rudy Gonzalez is a leader for the fight for better wages in the building trades in San Francisco, and Bard Bart is the new, the very new, was as of my understanding last night, um, head of the building trades in San Mateo County. Way to go. But I think they would all agree, our colleagues in Congress, as well as the leadership of the Building Trades, that our very special guest today is Jamie Redman, uh, who will bring her personal experience as a union worker, as a mom, uh, to this uh, and what this means to her. Let me just say this. Uh, America has been in the forefront in terms of aviation, uh, but over the years uh, uh, that um, aviation legacy has been not upheld to the fullest uh, with uh, generations of underinvestment, whether it's uh, uh, runways that need help, air traffic control towers, cramped terminals, and the rest. Indeed, experts in the world, when they rank airports in the world, 
America does not rank up there. In the, does not, it rarely makes the list. And, of course, as I've said, the COVID crisis has only made matters worse. That's why it's an honor to be with the, here with those who will build this future, the Airline Pilots Association, Association of Flight Attendants and National Air Traffic Controllers, uh, the Sprinkler Fitters Local 483, and you'll be hearing more about them uh, as we go into our, our program. But we are here because Democrats deliver. We delivered. <clears throat> Let me just say this. And I want all of this to be as bipartisan as possible, believe me, and I wish it were. In the, in the rescue plan that was passed a year ago in this coming March, signed by President Biden under his leadership, we received $484 million for SFO, Four hundred and almost a half a billion dollars in that one bill without one Republican vote, House or Senate, without one Republican vote. So we really need to have them take pride in what's happening. They are <clears throat> eager to vote no and take the dough. But when they show up at these groundbreakings and ribbon cuttings, we have to make them know we have more that we need to do. We need their help as we go forward. But as the President said <clears throat> in the bill that came next, which was bipartisan. We got 13 votes out of 213 in the House uh, for the bill from the Republicans. I want to find my common ground for infrastructure with the Republicans, but I will not confine my vision for the future of our country to what we can do there. We need to do more, and we need to build back better, which we intend to do. But in the meantime, we passed the infrastructure legislation. and. Again, uh, with that, we were delivering $25 billion to airports in all 50 states and, and creating good-paying union jobs. And over the next five years, $250 million is coming to SFO to jumpstart upgrades to terminals stalled by COVID. And we are fighting for SFO's share of a $5 billion pot for California specifically. So there's more, uh, more to come. So we have all of that happening. And then in Build Back Better, we have more opportunity for that. Our work will not stop at the tarmac. This legislation is part of every aspect of our economy and transportation and rail, bridges, public transit, drinking water, getting the lead out of drinking water for our children and much more. Our infrastructure law will meet the challenges of the 21st century, but we need to do more to save the planet, and that's what Build Back Better will do. So for these and other reasons, uh, we're hoping that we can pass BBB very soon. We will be passing our omnibus Keep Government Open legislation very soon. All of this will accrue to the benefit of what we are gathered here to do, to create good-paying jobs, to uphold the infrastructure, which is so essential to our economy, to our job creation, to the quality of life of the people here. And there is a champion in Congress in that regard for many years now, someone who has given service to the community and the state legislature, her leadership well known there, came to Congress effective from the start, uh, very, very, uh, shall we say, relentless when it comes to San Mateo County, and I'm proud to share representation of the city of San Francisco uh, with c the congresswoman. And again, whatever you, whatever piece of uh, infrastructure or the bay that you could name, uh, Jackie has, been, excuse me, Congresswoman Jackie Spear has been a part of it. And with that, it's my pleasure now to yield to the distinguished gentlewoman uh, from San Mateo, San Francisco, California, Jackie Spear. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I want you all to, to look at the three of us here. Anna, come forward. Uh, the speaker often says, 
when women succeed, America succeeds. And I think there's no question that this region succeeds because the women succeed. So I'm honored to be here with all of you. Um, we are here with a very simple message. The Biden administration delivered for the American people and Speaker Pelosi delivered for the American people. You know, the $1.2 trillion investment that the Infrastructure Act provides was talked in terms of the future. But truly, it's also about the present because the failure of the Pittsburgh Bridge this morning is a tragic example of the neglect that this country has engaged in for so many years. And it took President Biden to accomplish that with the great help of Speaker Pelosi. So we are proud to say that we have $4.5 billion uh, coming to the Bay Area as part of that and $250 million to SFO over the next five years just for openers. So this big hole you see behind us is $250 million that will then resurrect uh, the rest of uh, the final phase of the Harvey Milk Terminal 1. And the good news there is that SFO can seek more money, Ivar, um, in addition to that $250 million, and we will work with you to achieve that as well. The money that I hope will also be spent here is for the desperate conditions that my constituents have to sleep in, and that is the noise mitigation that I hope will, again, be part of our efforts as we uh, build this great facility. Um, I must say that this is a great moment to thank the workers, to thank you for all that you've done in terms of building this terminal and moving forward uh, on this great project. I want to thank the TSA security staff, the baggage handlers, the ticket counter personnel, the flight attendants, the flight attendants who um, are always there to assist, but more recently um, have been challenged by visitors, to the engineers, the air traffic controllers, the pilots, and to Ivar and your team, who from time to time we have to negotiate, but we always negotiate uh, in good faith and with an effort to make sure that it's a win-win for everyone. And I want to just say publicly how appreciative I am of all of your work here. COVID has had a huge impact here. Anxiety of travelers has had a huge impact here. And certainly the abusive behavior of some travelers has had an effect on the flight attendants and pilots and the ticket takers and the TSA workers. I mean, you can kind of go down the list, all those who have been impacted. So we thank you, and we uh, want you to know that we have your backs, and we're not going to tolerate that kind of behavior at all. So the good news here is that as you look at the Bay Area, based on GDP, it is the 26th biggest economy in the world. Think about that. So this is a world-class airport, and we're going to maintain it as a world-class airport. So being 26, you might want to know who is 25th. Well, Belgium is 25th, and I think if we just ask C's and Ghirardelli and Guitard to kind of up their um, chocolate manufacturing, we will eclipse Belgium very soon. So thank you all very much. It's now my pleasure to introduce my great colleague and dear friend, Congresswoman Anna Eshoo, who represents both San Mateo County and Santa Clara County, and part of Santa Cruz County, too. Thank you, Jackie. Well, good afternoon, everyone. There's a uh, saying uh, that uh, those that prece preceded me uh, have said everything that needs to be said. 
So I'm not going to put the microphone down yet, though. Uh, Ivar, thank you for your superb leadership. Uh, to the building trades, to all the stakeholders, the workers, the contractors, the pilots, uh, as Congresswoman Spears so ably listed out the honor roll of those that make this place work. My second home, I would submit to you, is San Francisco International Airport, uh, because I am here faithfully twice a week for now almost 30 years. So I know every nook and cranny. I know what works and what doesn't work. Uh, I know where my favorite food snacks are. Uh, but more importantly, this is the gateway to the two magic words in our region. San Francisco, the city of St. Francis, and Silicon Valley, right here. And as was said, this needs to be a world-class airport, and that's what we're here to celebrate. You cannot, you cannot even begin to dream of the completion of these projects unless you have the money. And we have delivered that, and we will continue to. The infrastructure of our country has been neglected. We just came from another press conference for Caltrain. That started, that, that passenger service was launched during the administration of Abraham Lincoln, 1863. And here we are in our day and our time, not just remembering the past from the old original terminal, but with the name of Harvey Milk, who always is a reminder of the great mayor of the city of San Francisco, at that time, George Moscone. But we, in our time, are making history by making sure that this is a jewel in the crown of SFO. So I look forward to wandering around in the new terminal, Ivar, and I salute all of you. Uh, number one, it always needs to be restated that it was the vision of President Biden and the person that actually executed and made it happen was Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Thank you, everyone. I accept every compliment on behalf of the House Democrats whose intellect, idealism, integrity, and again, courage to get the job done uh, is, is what made everything happen for us. Let me just say, uh, in terms of uh, Harvey Milk and George Moscone, it was a horrible day. Many of us experienced learning of it uh, all those many years ago. And again, it, 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 Harvey was a pioneer in what he did. We hope to be pioneering for a long time to come, always making the future better. And part of that is, of course, uh, to do so in a way with good paying jobs that meet the needs of families in our communities. I didn't say in my earlier remarks that one thing we did do in a bipartisan way was the CARES Act, where we put $65 billion into saving the airlines. It wasn't about the corporate airline. It was about all the money going to keep the jobs, to protect the workers. <coughs> the... Um, and the beyond, beyond the pilots and the, and the flight attendants and the rest, uh, we uh, then had further money for aviation beyond the plane uh, to meet the needs of our machinists who are so vital to all of the uh, functioning of an airport. I didn't mention earlier that with us today, uh, because he just he arrived later, is um, uh, Anad Singh, and I know he'll be acknowledged, uh, but from Unite Here Airlines Catering Food Service Workers. That's a fight we continue to have uh, with the airlines and the rest to make sure uh, that the respect uh, that uh, if people are enjoying a meal on a plane, they have to respect the work that goes into it. Thank you for your courage and leadership in that regard. But imagine that, $65 billion to sustain the industry. And then we, of course, needed to do more. 
One of the people who has helped us all along the way from the, uh, in the union movement, both as the head of the San Francisco Labor Council and now as the head of the uh, of building trades in San Francisco, is Rudy Gonzalez. Uh, Rudy Gonzalez not only helps us with building trades, jobs, and fairness in the workplace for all workers, as he did at San Francisco Labor Council, he helps us with education, being a dad with small children. He helps us with education, right? Zoe has been a frequent guest, his daughter at our, she's in school today, (laughs) but she has been, (laughs) well, that's where she should be, Um, but we've had her as a frequent guest, and of course, we're always proud of his little baby boy, but in any event, Rudy has been a real champion, an eloquent, dynamic spokesperson for working families. And as we always say, we don't, Jackie and Anna and I, Congresswoman Eshoo, Congresswoman uh, Spear and I don't go to the front to make a fight so that we could have anything less than fairness for our workers as part of the result. That is absolutely essential, whether it's food workers or machinists and everything in between uh, to make a plane uh, take off. So I'm proud to work alongside of Rudy Gonzalez for many years, and I'm very, as I said, a powerful voice for workers and working families in our community. I'm now going to yield the floor to him for the purpose of an introduction of our VIPs here today, as I mentioned earlier, but I'm going to give that privilege. I I talked about Jamie Redman earlier and Bart, but the privilege to introduce them goes to our distinguished guest, Rudy Gonzalez. Much appreciated. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As we say in the movement, Sister Pelosi, uh, you know, we talk about bipartisanship, and, and many people think about Republicans and Democrats. I thought we were talking about San Francisco and San Mateo counties that Ivar has to juggle. But I also want to talk about workers. Workers. Or the 49ers and the Rams. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. It's only the first team, only the 49ers, Madam Speaker. But I will say, from start to finish, the economic engine that is this airport is driven and fueled by the workers, by the air traffic controllers, by Bernie from the Airline Pilots Association, by James from the flight attendants. You don't see them, they're often behind the scenes, but there's Electrical Workers Local 6 members, Ferdinand and Oliver, behind us keeping the store. From start to finish, this airport is an economic engine, not just for business, but for working-class people and the families and the communities they support. I know that's a tremendous burden for you, Mr. Sotero. And as a director, he's not just responsible for the safe operation of this facility, but he's also expected to transfer then some of those resources into the city's general coffers. And it couldn't be more important than in a time like now when we are required and relying upon vital public health and infrastructure services for so many people in so much need. Now, the skilled and trained hands behind us, from every inch of duct work and walls that are hung and pipe that is fitted, uh, those are skilled and trained workers. Their hands aren't quite as soft as mine, and they're earning a living right now because when this engine stalled, Democrats, and it's not political, but I'm biased, Madam Speaker, Democrats, Nancy Pelosi, refueled that engine kept people from losing their homes, kept them from losing their health care, kept this a global state-of-the-art airport, and kept many of our workers, like the workers that Bart Pantoja, our next speaker, represents. And so someone who has worked in the field, lived in the field, and now is in union leadership, and I'm so honored he's my colleague here in a bipartisan way in San Mateo County. He's now head of the building trades and will protect and fight and work with you, Ivar, for the skilled and trained workers and all workers here at SFO. Please welcome Bart Pantoja of Glazer 718 and newly elected Secretary Treasurer of the San Mateo Building and Construction Trades. Thanks, Brad. Uh, thank you, Rudy. So, yeah, I'm new at this. So, unlike these... Uh, very accomplished speakers. I wrote my stuff down. So as, as Rudy mentioned, um, before this, taking this position, I was actually a union representative for Glazers Architectural and Glass Metal Workers, Local 718, um, International Painters and Allied Trades, District Council 16. Uh, so it's been a great, it's a great honor and privilege to now represent all the building trades uh, affiliates of San Mateo County, and I'm really looking forward to that. Get to my beginning. 
what a great opportunity this is and will be for workers like myself who are in the field and like my sister here, Jamie, who uh, still is looking to work in the field and has actually worked on this project. Um, I've worked on many infrastructure projects in my 20 years uh, working with the tools, like water treatment facilities, highway toll plazas, hospitals, airports, including this one. My career as a union glazer has provided for, my, for me and my family for good wages, health care, pension with the opportunity to hope, hopefully retire with dignity. Uh, development and renovation and maintenance of this great travel hub provides for working families not, on, not just on this project, but also for the service industry and the hospitality industry that has suffered these last couple of years with the pandemic. Prior to this pandemic, construction in the Bay Area was on a steady incline rising from the recession. But because of our elected representatives fighting for legislation that brings opportunity to those willing to work, in my opinion, is good government. So that's short and sweet. <laughs> um, again, I, like I said, I'm, I'm new at this, so thanks for bearing with me. I look forward. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, really the, the, the real... the. Uh, the jewel of uh, being in the union leadership position I am is, is to see uh, young uh, men and women come into the trade like Jamie and, and make careers like I did and have success and provide for their family. So with that, I'd like to thank you for this great opportunity that uh, we can all get to work. And I'd like to introduce uh, my uh, local member, uh, Jamie Redman. Hello, everybody. Um, it's an honor to be here. This is a great opportunity for me. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a native San Franciscan, born and raised. Um, I'm a single parent. My uh, daughter father passed in 2015. Um, and with that, it's just been a blessing to get into trade. Um, I got in in about 2012. Um, I did the program City Build, the pre-apprenticeship program. I got in, and just getting in has been a blessing for me. I'm able to provide for my family. Um, coming from Bayview Hunters Point, just being a, a pillar, you know what I'm saying, an example for other people in my community. Um, it's gave me health benefits. You know, I gained skills in my trade, and I'm just able to put forth my abilities, you know. And um, working here at the airport was a great experience for me. Um, I put the glass and metal systems in. I worked at Terminal 1, um, also at the long-term parking. Um, and just getting back to work is very important. The pandemic was a real struggle for me, you know, struggling to make ends meet and put food on the table, not just for me, for all my union brothers and sisters. It's important to get back to work um, and to take care of my daughter. That's the most important. You know, being a single parent is hard but I'm trying to be the best example I can for her. She actually attends Sil uh, Harvey Milk Civil Rights Academy in San Francisco. So that's uh, a good thing. I know a lot about Harvey Milk. Um, and this opportunity is just great. I'm just honored. I just want to get back to work and be able to, um, you know, get my daughter out the community we live in. Like, I can't even let her play outside without worrying about bullets flying or cars speeding down the block. So I'm just trying to stay focused and stay working so I could do that, you know, reach my goals. So, thank you. Thank you. What's your daughter's name? Her name is Regine. Regine. Regine is her daughter. How lovely. Thank you. For Regine, I want to say that because of the, afford the uh, infrastructure bill, a few weeks ago we had an event, our Safe Streets Initiative uh, for San Francisco, so that it would be safer for children and families to be outside. Um, but with that, I'd like to take any questions. I did want to say, though, that listening <clears throat> to Jamie and the training that she received and listening to Bart saying he worked with the tools, he knows the jobs, he knows the workers, and as a territory, congratulations and good luck to you in your leadership role. I hope that the challenges it presents doesn't make you long to get back to the tools, but uh, maybe so. We'll see. We'll see. But I just want to say this about Jamie. In the Build Back Better legislation, which is really important, as I said, the president said, I will not confine my dream vision for America 
uh, to we can accomplish just in a bipartisan way, even though we wish that could be more. It's about saving the planet and good green paying union jobs and saving the planet. But as regards directly to Jamie, it has in their legislation uh, provisions that are transformative for women in the workforce. Frankly, for dads too, anyone who has responsibilities at home. Good, affordable, lowering the cost for child care, having universal pre-K, child tax credit, issues that relate to home health care. If you have a, a, a parent, a sibling, someone at home, even beyond being a child, who needs health care. So this says that we honor those workers who provide child care and home health care and the rest with the ability to get fair pay, hopefully to be unionized as well, and as well as <clears throat> the meeting the needs of our children. Our motto in San Francisco has been children learning, parents earning. And Jamie, with the training she received in the city bill, we've been there together to see how, what that training is about, that she is the future. This legislation wants to make that future lower cost, bigger pay, better opportunity for Jamie. With that, my colleagues would be happy to take any questions you may have. Progressive caucus call for a version of Build Back Better to be passed by the State of the Union on March 1st. That, uh, that's, that is an aspiration that they have. But that we will pass the bill when we have the votes to pass the bill, and we cannot stop pressing for that. It is so important, and we've all in our caucus, 90-some percent of our caucus, 100 percent there uh, to pass the bill, and actually in our house, 100 percent of them. But again, that's a, a we don't have a timetable. That's a, an aspiration, which is one that would be useful. We have other things we have to do. We have to pass the omnibus bill to keep government open, which is a trillion and a half dollar bill, a trillion and a half dollar bill, which has uh, allocations of funds for many of the priorities we've talked about here. We want to pass the CHIPS Act, which will again advance American manufacturing, making us, keeping us a leader in the world. Uh, and we have a number of pieces of legislation that we're working on, but the BBB is absolutely essential. I hope that they're right. I don't, I don't uh, uh, subscribe to any particular date, though. Any other questions? No? Okay, so we're all ready for Sunday? Wasn't last week something? How about that? How about that? <laughs> well, one thing is for sure, a California team will go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> but uh, we want it to be a, a team in red. <laughs> That's called di being diplomatic. <laughs> in any event, we got the Warriors, we got the, we got, the, and, and pretty soon we'll have the Giants. So again, that is a unifying thing in our community. Uh, but we want everybody to be unified in protecting God's creation, this, this beautiful planet that's in BBB, being transformative in terms of health care, child care, home health care, and the rest for women and dads in the workplace, that, those with family responsibilities. And we want to do all of this in the most bipartisan way possible. And at the same time, we take an oath to protect and defend, and we're working with the, the, the White House to show that we are ready for whatever the prospects are as regard, in regard to Ukraine. So anyway, it's a very busy time, uh, and this is a very important occasion for us. I'm honored to be here with my colleague in representation of San Francisco, Jackie Spear, our colleague who represents San Mateo, Santa Clara and beyond, uh, Anna Eshu, we want to salute once again Ivan Sotaro for your great leadership. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all very much. Thank you.